Welcome from somewhat sunny North Carolina. I'm making a video today to talk about some questions that I've gotten in responses to my first two videos. I want to be talking about what this system calls islanding mode. That is operating when the grid goes off. What happens? What can the system do? What can the batteries provide? What can the solar panels provide? And how does it all work together? I'm also going to give you some information about where you can find information about the Generac components. What are the, what's the size? What's the width? What's the depth? How much do they weigh? That kind of information on the web. I'm going to be talking about the critical load panel that I talked about in the review. I said I'd give you more information about it. And that directly pertains to the islanding mode and the way the system is installed. I also got asked about how many panels I have and how much power do they provide. That information is back in my very first video on the Generac Power System Review. But I have 14 panels and they provide about 4.8 kilowatts of peak power or when I'm getting the most out of them that I can. So let's get started. Okay, I'll try to break this down to as simple as I can, so hopefully it's clear in what I'm saying. Okay, let's look at this scenario. The grid goes off. We lose main power. The inverter realizes that, senses that the power is gone, and the first thing it does is it cuts the electrical connection to the grid. That's for safety reasons, and it's required by electrical code. So now we're completely disconnected from the grid, until the system senses there's power coming in from the electric company again and the grid's active, providing power. <clears throat> so what it does at that point, let's say it's noon and there's some sun out. So I'm getting some solar power from the panels and as well, my battery unit is completely charged, which for me is about almost nine kilowatts of storage. So what the inverter is going to do in islandy mode is it's going to go and see what I've got turned on in the critical load panel because I can pick which one of those circuits over here that I turn on. Like I might not have the kitchen uh, outlets turned on or a bedroom that I'm, we're not using the outlets turned on or the lights turned on to conserve the battery uh, as long as possible. Because, of course, again, once the sun goes down and the solar power goes to zero, it can only draw on from the battery at that point. I think that with a fully charged battery and a decent amount of sun in a day, I can probably run the uh, circuits that I need to uh, for about 20 hours, which would mean I might lose power for about four hours, but nothing in my freezers is going to die in that time. And as soon as the sun comes back up, if I got any kind of sunlight, I'm going to start getting power again. So the way it works is the more battery capacity that you have and the more panels that you have, of course, the more power you're going to generate and be able to store and keep working longer through the night, perhaps. But batteries are expensive and solar panels. So you have. Okay, this is the critical loads panel. What this holds are the circuits that I designated to the electrician before he came and did this work on the system. He basically took the circuits out of that box, the breakers and everything, and moved them into this box. This, these are the circuits in the house that will be run by the Generac system when we lose grid power. And it will only power them. Everything that's in the main breaker box over here will not be powered. What's in that main fuse box still? Things like the air conditioning, the hot water heater, the washer and dryer, the electric oven. Things that draw a lot of power that are not essential that I have powered while the grid is gone. Like say after a hurricane we might lose power here. That was driven by what I decided was going to be important, what's in that critical load panel box, as well as how much energy I can get out of my, let me move it, out of my battery over here and out of my solar panels. So I have circuits in here like 
the kitchen outlets, the bedrooms, the, the garage door, the refrigerators, the microwave, the TVs, the computers, very important, my router for internet. All the things that I want to have when the power goes out to stay connected, have some lights, but I can't run, like I said, I can't run the hot water heater, I can't run the AC. Those are nice to have, but not have to have. I would have had to have bought a much bigger capacity system to power those things. And it takes a lot more solar panels to keep them. So just to give you some numbers, if I have all my critical load panels breakers on, I draw somewhere normally between one and a half and two kilowatts an hour, sometimes as low as two or three hundred and sometimes as high as two and a half, like if a refrigerator is kicking on or something that's been idle. So it just really depends on what I have on, but that's for now enough capacity and I'm going to buy another battery for the battery unit. But again, that's going to run me to see my component cost video. That's going to cost me around one eighteen hundred dollars to put in another two point eight five kilowatt capacity battery. So I hope that explains what happens in islanding mode. Uh, and again, what the system's going to do is once it senses the grid powers back, it's automatically going to reconnect to the grid and I come out of islanding mode. Different systems have different names for it, but one of the general terms I found in the solar world is islanding mode, which means you're your own little island of power, not getting anything from the grid because there's no grid power available. So you're basically at that point off the grid. This system isn't designed for total off the grid operations. That's a different setup. This is meant for when you are running your home off of the grid. You want some supplementary power, especially in times of no power. Uh, these things are very popular out in California right now because the rolling blackouts they've been having in the last few years. I think they're experiencing some right now with all the fires going on out there. Oh, component, component sizes. Somebody asked about, well, how big is the inverter? How big is the uh, battery storage cabinet? If you go to the Generac webpage, Google Generac, you will see their section on, I think it's energy efficient products. I'll try to put a link in the description below, in the box below. Um, and on that, you will find the Generac component data sheets for each one of these components. And it gives all kinds of information, including the weight and the physical dimensions. Uh, that's going to be better than me trying to quote them here and throw a lot of different numbers at you that you probably won't remember anyway. You can go there, you can download them, and you can print them out and consult them as you need to. Keep the questions coming. I hope this has been useful and have a great day and support your national parks.